Beholden to no one. Beholden to no one. Mizuno is now in the studio. Now in the running shoe arsenal and the running shoe rotation. And oh, I have. It's so exciting to try really a brand new brand for me. I've worn them before, but it's been a long, long time. I won't even mention how long it's been. So it's exciting to have Mizuno now in the studio. And listen, we know the story of Nike. We know the story of Adidas, probably New Balance, maybe Saucony. I'm a history guy, I love history. So here's a little history for you on Mizuno. The company was started in 19. 06. Now, it's, it's crazy. There's a lot of uh, athletic apparel companies starting right around that time period in history. Uh, I believe Saucony was one, New Balance Saucony. They're all right around that time frame. And so the company was started by Rihashi and Rizzo Mizuno, two brothers. How crazy. Uh, Adidas was started by two brothers as well. It's kind of interesting. Joseph, are you listening? Maybe we need to start a running shoe company. Okay, it started in 1906 in Osaka Japan. They started out by making a uh, baseball, uh, I think actual baseballs or it was baseball gloves, eventually evolving into golf clubs. And it wasn't until the early 1970s that they came out with the M line. So it was, it was called literally the M line running shoes. M if somebody has ever held one, I'd be fascinated to hear. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, so that was the early seventies that they started to make running shoes. Does anybody know, is Mizuno just completely dominating the Japanese running market? Like, Japan is incredible. Like, the more I learn about running in Japan, it's amazing, especially road running. They, they, they crush road running. So if somebody is familiar with Japanese running culture, let me know if Mizuno is just like at the top of the class over there. Like, are they just on everybody's feet because they were started in Osaka. And before we move along into the specs, as I always say, this is not my full review. This is just my first impression of the Wave Knit R2. Full review will happen after 50 miles. Okay, my size is coming in at nine ounces. Uh, I think a, a couple sizes up, you're looking at 10 ounces, a little over 10 ounces is the reports that I'm reading. And listen to this drop, a 12 millimeter drop, a 12 millimeter drop. That is huge from heel to toe. So if you are a zero drop fan or like a four to six drop fan, and I often think that I really enjoy like a right around six millimeter drop. Anyway, I'll just say right now, the 12 millimeter felt pretty nice today. Uh, so anyway, 12 millimeter from heel to toe, that might be the highest drop almost that I've ever run in. I, I'd have to think back, but uh, cause a lot of Nikes are 10. The Wave Knit R2 is a neutral shoe. Uh, but I'm just gonna put it out there right now because we're gonna we're about to talk about the outsole. It feels a little bit like a stabilized shoe. Just a little bit. It is a neutral shoe for sure, but I must say it's not your traditional kind of I want you know loosey goosey neutral shoe. It's got a little bit of stability in it. Um, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna save the upper and the midsole discussion for the full review, so stay tuned for that down the road. Let's jump to the outsole. It is a highly abrasion resistant compound that staves off like the debilitating effects of like repeated usage over and over and over again. And just feeling it with my fingers, it feels very, very tough. I'm just gonna say it right now, very well constructed through the heel on the outsole. They have flex controllers placed in the, in the forefoot section. Uh, these elements are a means of heightening flexibility and push off energy, uh, especially when gearing towards the toe off uh, through your gait cycle. And guess what? I could feel it. I could feel a nice little energy return through the toe off. You don't always get that on your first run in a shoe, but I could feel a nice little, and not a lot, but a little energy return uh, as I was towing off through that gait cycle. As far as fit is concerned, I went true to size and it's feeling real good. However, and maybe a slight drawback, 
The toe box is feeling a little wide to me. I usually like a pretty snug fit through my shoes. And listen, I don't have the widest foot in the world, but um, I did notice a little bit of splaying of my toes through the toe box and it was fine, but I got used to it is the bottom line. I would have loved a little more of a lockdown feel uh, through the forefoot on the top of my foot. And then also just a very, very minor uh, drawback are the shoelaces are too short for the runner's knot. I barely, barely could tie the runner's knot today with the shoelaces. That is fixable. And again, just a minor, minor, minor detail. And for a couple positives, you ready for this? Are you ready, YouTube? A couple positives. The cornering. So I was noticing incredible grip and uh, uh, traction on the road. And like, okay, if you are racing a, a street 5K, 10K, and you have tight corners to turn at high speeds, like I felt so in control in this shoe today. Now, I wasn't going terribly fast over the five miles, but I just felt like I was gripping the road really well, like more so than the Audios 4. And I was really kind of bullish about the Audios 4 grip with that continental rubber on the outsole. I don't know, it was amazing. Okay, the other positive, bear with me on this illustration. Will you bear with me? Here we go. You remember, you know when you're going down steps and you accidentally uh, miss a step and you kind of slip just a little bit, but it actually does not turn into a, a devastating slip where you fall. It's actually a slip that actually almost helps you. Uh, it's like you're going down an escalator of, of stairs. Like you just kind of da-da-da. It's like da-da-da-da. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. again, bear with me. So I was going, I was doing a little bit of heel striking today just to feel it out. And it felt like I was getting a nice little da-da-da, da-da-da-da, did it through, through my gait cycle. Just like a nice little, almost like I was missing a step and like, it, it felt the ride was nice. The ride, and listen, I'm beholden to no one. I'm not being paid to say this. I was, I am cautiously optimistic about this shoe and frankly about Mizuno now. Um, I don't know. And listen, I only did five miles. Talk to me in like five more, uh, five more runs from now. But I'm pretty excited about what I experienced today. And I'll just say one last thing is that I only did five. I don't see this shoe going much past like 12 miles or a half marathon. It just felt uh, like the outsole was a little rigid, a little hard landing, just a little bit, um, especially through the, just a little bit through the forefoot. So I don't think this is gonna be a long run shoe. I could be wrong, uh, but those are my first impressions of the Mizuno Waveknit R2. Crazy, I never thought I would be running in Mizuno again. And I'm, I'm like I said, cautiously optimistic about what I experienced today. And you better believe the key word is going to be optimistic because that's, that's how I'm feeling right now. That's how I'm feeling. And the question of the day for this video, who has worn Mizuno ever? Have you raced in Mizuno? I know they have a nice racing shoe lineup, uh, especially in track spikes. So let us know uh, what's your experience with Mizuno. If you've never worn Mizuno, let us know why as well, if you feel comfortable sharing. For me, it basically comes down to a crowded marketplace and working it into the rotation. Okay, one last thought and then I'm gonna be quiet. In the middle of my run today, I was almost thinking to myself, when I do my next threshold run, which is gonna be six miles in like two weeks from now, I was thinking on the run today, this shoe could be an option for that run which is exciting, which is very exciting. All right, that is all for today. I could talk all night because uh, oh, I'm kind of excited, kind of excited. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow. I'm back, I'm back real quick. Did I mention this? I think I forgot. $130. So they're not giving it away, but it appears that the quality of the material and the quality of the engineering behind it, 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 it seems like it's a very, very well constructed shoe. All right. So I'm guessing the durability is going to be on point. Uh, so anyway, $130. Okay. Now we're signing off.